Now we're going to be testing convergence of an improper integral by comparing it to integrals for which we know the convergence behavior. So we have our integral here. And you're looking at this integrand here. And going back to pre-calculus, the n behavior as x is going to infinity means that really all you're going to have at the end is x squared over x to the third, which is going to be going to 1 over x. So we're thinking that since the integral of 1 to infinity of 1 over x diverges, we're thinking that this integral diverges. So here's your strategy. To show an integral diverges. You show that your integral is greater or equal to an integral you know diverges. So here's a picture of that. So let's say this bottom curve is known to diverge because it just doesn't, the curve doesn't dive down in the x-axis fast enough. So if your integral on the region of integration, say from 1 to infinity, is greater than the one you know to diverge, then your integral is going to diverge. So if this area here, from say here, if that area adds up to infinity, then certainly your area, which is bigger, adds up to infinity also. So that's your strategy. So looking at this, we know that 1 to infinity of 1 over x diverges. So here's a side note over here. If you want to show something is greater than another fraction, such as 3 fourths is greater than 2 fifths, you can either make the numerator smaller to the next fraction. That'll make the next fraction smaller. Or you can make the denominator bigger and that'll make the next fraction smaller, proving that your original fraction is bigger. Or you can do both. So that's your strategy. So here is your integrand, and I want it to be greater, so I'm going to make a move to make this smaller going to the x squared. So it definitely is, x squared is definitely smaller than the x squared plus 1. So this is smaller than x squared plus 1. So I'm making the second fraction here smaller. Then I made a move to just factor out the x cubed so that denominator stays equal. Factor out the x cubed. You got this. Okay, then that's greater than or equal to on the interval 1 to infinity, which is where my x values are. This fraction here is greater than or equal to x squared, that's the same, over x cubed, that's the same. 1 is the same. What I'm claiming is that I'm going to make the denominator of the second fraction bigger. So I'm going this direction, making this side bigger. So I can make the f second fraction here smaller. So I'm claiming that 3 is bigger than 3 over x squared as soon as you get past x equals 1 and then 2 and 3. Like if x is 2, this is only 3 fourths, 3 is definitely bigger. But if we're at x equal 1, 3 is equal to 3. 
and then also 2 is bigger than 2 over x cubed on this interval. So I've made a denominator of the second fraction bigger. Therefore, the first fraction here is greater than the second fraction. So you really have to just practice that kind of idea to get it into your head. And of course, this fraction equals 1 6 times 1 over x. Okay, because x squared over x cubed is 1 over x. So now we have our original integral, which is right here, is greater than, because there was a greater than in the chain right there, then this 1, 6, 1 over x, 1 to infinity dx integral. And that equals 1, 6 times this integral, which we recognize diverges. So this integral diverges. So 1, 6 of the integral definitely diverges because 1, 6 of infinity is still infinity. Therefore, our integral is greater than an integral that diverges. So it diverges. Now we'll go on to another problem here. Completely different. Integral 5 to 8 of this function. The trouble is at t equal 5, which it happens to be the lower limit. So it's the style and has the kind of behavior that this integral does where you have a zero where your trouble spot is and you have an, any number up here, let's just say one. Okay, We know this integral converges because the p-value t to the one-half the p equaling one-half is less than 1. And when your integral goes from 0 to 1, that integral converges. If you forgot, do a quick graph. This is, this curve is 1 over square root of t. Converges very slowly as you're going to infinity, but it slams up against the asymptote at the y-axis fast, which makes this area converge. All right, strategy. To show your integral converges, show that your integral is less or equal to an integral you know converges. It's like on this picture. Here's the interval. The interval is here, 0 to 1. So your integral here and here is less than the integral you know converges. So that means it's going to converge, not going to go to infinity. So what we do here, and there's different ways you can do this, but what I did was I factored out this 6 over to here. Then I split up the 5 to 8 to 5 to 6 because that's one unit difference and I'm going to substitute this to be 0 to 1 and then the remainder 6 to 8. Now over here on this part here there's no trouble at all. There's no undefined spots. You're beyond where the trouble is. So um, there's proper limits. There's nothing improper about this. This is just going to add up to some finite number. So that's going to converge. Now let's work on this integral. Do a u substitution, figure out the new u, uh, limits. So that integral inside there from 5 to 6 is equal to this. And that converges because the p-value, which is 1 half, uh, is less than 1. So it converges. So looking back up to here, 6 times convergent plus something that converge is 
convergent. So 6 times something that converges plus 6 times something that converges is definitely convergent, or it converges. Therefore, the original integral converges.